Alright, so this is uh, Corey Agar for uh, looking into the octagon. Uh, this is the first video blog. Uh, last Saturday night, we uh, were treated to a seven card main event uh, for UFC 144, which took place in Tokyo, Japan at the Super Saitama Arena. And uh, now it was a night of uh, upsets, like starting right from the bottom of the card. Uh, the first fight of the night, we had uh, I see uh, Tamara, who who took the fight on two weeks' notice, and it was actually coming off of a loss uh, back in November, and he took on uh, the highly regarded uh, Tikan Zhang uh, from China, who has a a nasty guillotine choke. So so I thought uh, Zhang would take the fight early in the first round by, by submission uh, but that wasn't the case as uh, uh, Tamara was able to uh, TK, TKO him so he didn't just beat him but he finished him um, later on on the card uh, Chris Caruso defeated Takia Mizugaki which is another upset uh, however Mizugaki controlled the fight and it was a very controversial decision uh, towards uh, Caruso, so Dana White still ended up paying Mizugaki his his entire uh, win bonus and everything, and it's going to treat him like he won because, uh, in my eyes and in everybody else's eyes, Mizugaki seemed to be the one who won the fight. But the judges, I guess, I don't know if something went wrong, but they saw him, that Caruso won the fight. Another upset was. Uh, uh, Br British Bon Lee, who submitted uh, Norofumi Kid Yamamoto in uh, the very first round by armbar. Uh, Yamamoto was a highly regarded Japanese fighter. Uh, he's, he's, he's been one of the Japanese prospects that finally came over the UFC with the, the new lighter weight classes just coming into effect in the last little while. And uh, he's a great wrestler, great Japanese wrestler. But uh, Bon Lee, 11, 11, 7 and 1 record, was able to was able to upset him uh, in the first round. Uh, another big fight uh, in the middle division, Yushin Okami, who uh, just recently had a, a title fight against Anderson Silva, was taking on uh, the American Tim Bosch. Okami's huge favorite coming the fight and uh, in the first two rounds he just completely dominated he showed a brand new highly like skilled uh, striking game that even Joe Rogan on the, the announcement table was uh, talking about how improved his striking was and he just battered uh, the coach with that and in the second round he took him down and just put the, the hurt on Tim Bosch all second round and third round he he slipped and he fell back into the cage so he started backing up and as he's backing up because he slipped both Bosch just started whipping hooks and punches out there and ended up landing some got inside and just went to town on the uppercuts and, and then ended up knocking O'Connor in that last round uh, Joe Rogan said it was the biggest comeback he's ever seen in the octagon. I don't know if it'd be the biggest comeback that I've ever seen, but definitely up there was uh, he, he was getting beat by a, a world class fighter and uh, came back and just knocked, knocked him out. Um, another upset was Mark Hunt uh, who KO'd. Chuck Kong in the very first round. Mark Hunt isn't your normal heavyweight fighter as he's uh, 5'10 and 264 pounds. He's, he's, a, he's a short but strong, beefy heavyweight with just kickboxing skills. His ground game, not very good, but his low center grab game, uh, heavy set uh, weight is, you know, it's kind of hard to take him down. But he just got inside Congo and just 
through those those power punches, and you can't let more come in. And uh, interesting fact is that uh, when UFC bought Pride uh, back in 2006, uh, Dana White offered to just pay off Mark Hunt's contract because his record was he was way below 500. Uh, he just Dana White didn't see him as a UFC caliber fighter, so he just pay him off and he can go on his way. You don't have to do anything for the money. But Mark Hunt said, no, 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 like, let me fight. I want to earn my money. And now he's put together a three-fight winning streak, and uh, he's climbed those ranks in the UFC now. It's, it's crazy. Uh, I think once they put him up against a big, a big wrestler, he's going to finally uh, lose his winning streak. But anybody with that kind of KO power is, uh, is dangerous. In the US, especially in the UFC with the little gloves and MMA and everything. Um, and then uh, the last upset, uh, I guess, would be uh, Ryan Bader, who controlled uh, Rampage Jackson for, for three rounds in the Coleman event. Now, Rampage came in overweight, uh, wasn't himself. He said he injured himself. Uh, during his training camp, so he's limited on his cardio and what he could train for. So I think that was very, uh, you, you can't uh, judge Rampage by how he fought that fight. Uh, if he was 100% and he was able to train his wrestling and train better, I think he, he definitely could have won the fight, but it, he wasn't the normal Rampage jobs in that fight. Uh, and then the headliner, the main event, uh, Frankie Edgar against uh, Ben Henderson. A uh, very controversial decision I, in some people's eyes. Uh, it depends how you kind of judge the fight. Uh, Edgar came in as a champion, and uh, Henderson left it as the champion. Now, Dana White scored, the, said he scored the fight for Frankie. Uh, the matchmaker Joe Silva for the UFC said that he, he scored it for a landslide for uh, Frankie and actually had him like winning big. But it's just it's, it's how you judge the fight. Um, did Frankie win on points? Yeah, I'd say so. Did he win on damage? Hell no. Henderson, uh, he, the punches and kicks they landed, he made them count when he and he battered uh, Edgar throughout the fight. So, uh, breaking down the fight, five-round uh, lightweight championship fight. Uh, in the first round, you know, Edgar, Edgar took control of the pace right away, you know, using his great footwork. And, uh, you know, he was one for one his takedowns. So, uh, on my scorecard, I would... Obviously, you have the first round of Frankie. The second round, again, you know, Frankie's moving around. He establishes the rhythm of the fight. Uh, he's two for two on takedowns in the second round. Uh, not just takedowns, but it, like throws as well, you know. And uh, he he's controlling the pace again, you know, using his great footwork. But then in the last second of the round, he he uh, got up kicked by uh, Henderson. That knock that that rocked him hard, and and oh, and Henderson probably could have finished Edgar had he had more time on the clock. Then the bell ended and the round ended. So you throughout the round, you know, you got to give it to Edgar. But then did Henderson steal it right at the end? Depends how the judge scores it. Really, uh, that that big shot at the end. Definitely, you know, did the most damage in the round. So I guess, you know, in my eyes, I would I would score for Henderson uh, a ceiling in the last few seconds there. So it's one to one in the first round that I had before. Then the third, fourth, and fifth round, you know, much of the same. You know, Edgar controlled the pace of the fight. Um, third round, uh, probably give to Henderson because a lot of the punches that he's 
the kicks that he's landing were, you know, way more powerful, although Edgar is moving around and controlling the pace. He, he's not, he's not actually hurting Henderson at all. Uh, fourth round, uh, the biggest point was when Henderson, uh, got Edgar into, into a guillotine, and, uh, it looked like he may have had Edgar, but Edgar was able to survive and get out of it. Uh, I, I call that round. Uh, man, maybe Edgar, but has had a good guillotine. So I probably put it about 2-2 two to two for me. Uh, fifth round, you know, Edgar once again, you know, obviously, you know, uses his footwork, controls controls the pace and everything else, but uh, has some randomly nasty strikes, and when you look at both fighters, here's Edgar with a busted up face, bleeding, swollen, you look at Henderson, he's, he, he looks like he's just starting the fight, you know, he's, he doesn't look cut or injured at all, uh, but uh, you know, Henderson again finished the end of the last round, uh, with some heavy punches on top of Edgar. So could he be stolen around again? This last thing the judges see is uh, Edgar getting pounded on by Henderson. So uh, I'd probably get the last round to Edgar again, though, because the other you know, four and a half minutes of the fight, he, uh, he seemed to control. But you know, either way, like I said, on, on points I saw it for for out of here, damage, definitely it's for Henderson. And at the end of the day, you know, it's a fight. Uh, who won the fight? Uh, I say, I'd say Henderson. Because he, 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 he wasn't hurt after, you know, he, he didn't, he put, he put more beating on, on Edgar. Um, is, is a rematch warranted? Uh, I don't know, you know. Uh, Dana Wade, you know, he's on Edgar's side of the winning fight, so is Joe Silva, and they're the two people who, who choose who fights and, you know, and what the plan is for the UFC. So, I don't know if he will, but he, Dana White keeps telling Frankie that he's got to move down to featherweight because he, he barely cuts weight to go to uh, uh, 155. So he thinks Frankie should cut down to 145, which is, he should because he's very small for the lightweight division. And Dana's offered him a straight up title shot against Jose Aldo for the featherweight division. Uh, Aldo is a, is a great fighter. Uh, I don't know what Frankie wants to do, but I think he's definitely going to want to stay at lightweight for now. And, uh, get his belt back because he's definitely upset with losing it. And especially once you have something and you lose it, you're determined you get it back. So, I, I, I think he's going to keep protesting. I will keep protesting for a rematch and hopefully, you know, he gets it. Uh, because that would be a great fight. Although, I don't know who's next in line, maybe Anthony Pettis, you know. He won by a crazy head kick knockout, you know, that night, UFC 144 last Saturday. Uh, he's beaten uh, Henderson Pass and WWEC for their lightweight championship belt. So, and that would be a good fight too. Depends what Dana and the, and the, and the rest of the fans want. So, uh, we'll see where the UFC goes from there. Um, as for upcoming fights, you know, uh, there's a lot of title, title fights coming up in the next little while. Uh, the one I'm looking forward to the most is uh, Anderson Silva versus Chael Sonnen rematch. Uh, it's supposed to be sometime this summer in Brazil. Chael, Chael's going to talk about the storm again. He already has started uh, talking about Know, trying to get under Anderson's skin. Uh, hopefully, 
I'm a big Chell fan, so hopefully he, he can finish the deal this time and not get choked out in the last few seconds of the, of the last round. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be a great fight. So now uh, I'll end you off with a, a link to a, a video, a, a homemade trailer hyping up the fight. So if you just click right there, uh, you'll get the video. Alright, cheers.